Hey everyone, welcome to part 7 of my Demon Souls playthrough without any armor, without using ranged weapons, and using fists only. Following on from the previous part, I stood at the start of the smithing grounds debating whether or not that would be my next step. Decided it would be, but before running through, because I had enough souls in my inventory, I decided to run back to the Nexus and get a level upgrade before venturing into the smithing grounds. After the trouble I had with that fat official, I decided I would put this into strength just to get a little bit more damage out. But I have to say, if I were to do this run again, I'd be stacking vitality right from the start before I touched anything else. So many close calls and having more vitality would have made this a lot less stressful. So here I decided to swap out the Thief Ring for the Providential Ring to raise item discovery. The reason I did that is I remembered that these guys were the guys that dropped the Iron Knuckles, which is a fist weapon. I hadn't yet decided whether or not I would use fist weapons, whether or not I could really call a character using a fist weapon as being a fist only run. But since I hadn't decided that yet, I wanted to give myself the option to be able to use them if I wanted to. And for that, I needed these guys to drop the Iron Knuckles. I couldn't remember which of these guys would or could drop them. In my first playthrough, I was pretty sure they dropped in the tunnels area from these bare-fisted miners. So yeah, I didn't know if these guys could drop them. Or whether... I still don't know if these guys can drop them. But I put on the Providential Ring here in the hope that maybe they could. <coughs> The issue of swapping out the Thief Ring for the Providential Ring meant that by running in a bit reckless I attracted all of these enemies to me, ended up in this tunnel slowly picking away at them so this was a real time sink. What I didn't know at this point was these guys are actually the easiest characters or enemies in the game to parry. The arm swings have a really a fairly large uh, window for timing your parry. But had I known that, beating these guys would have taken seconds. But I didn't know that at this point and I certainly wasn't willing to test parrying on them 
whilst there were so many and I could have died just from uh, a few of their hits. So yeah, <laughs> so I ended up stuck in this tunnel and just trying to tap away at them bit by bit. And so after that, I thought, yeah, I better put the thief ring back on. I can hear a wolf behind those pots, so I'm pretty sure as soon as those, I get near those pots, a single wolf is going to come out and attack me. I make sure I'm healed up, and sure enough, out comes a wolf. And then two more that I were not expecting, and then a blast from a fat official, and look at my health. One more, one more hit and I would have been dead for sure. This was a very scary moment. No, I can't take a heal because I could die if I do that. And look at that. Like two, two or three millimeters of health left. I really should make a compilation of all the times I almost died in this playthrough. That would be pretty funny, because there's a lot of them. And then yet another wolf comes out, and it was at this point that I realized I'd been extremely lucky that this final wolf hadn't come out with the whole pack, because if that extra wolf had have come out with the whole pack, I would absolutely have been killed. And I'm pretty sure that fourth wolf didn't come out because of the thief ring. So swapping the providential ring out for the thief ring just before that encounter likely saved this entire playthrough. <laughs> so here's yet another fat official who's back I can't get to. And I get hit by him a lot here because I remember I was trying to look into that room to see if there are any enemies in there. And in doing that, I almost die yet again. Look at my health and saved by the regenerator ring also because without the regenerator ring, I would have died there. And I almost died there. I just avoided that other blast all because I wanted to make sure there were no enemies. I'm trying to look into that room and I'm trying to move my lock on to see if I can switch to an enemy in this room and I couldn't so that I knew that if I punched the fat official into the room I could safely go in there and start doing backstabs on him. So I almost got killed trying to make sure I would be safe which kind of makes no sense but yeah that's what I was doing. I didn't want this fat official fight to go on like the last one.
and here I remembered that if you headbutt enemies you can stagger them so I used the headbutt to stagger him and get my stamina back to hit him more over and over again which I didn't do with the last guy and that's why he managed to hit me a few times but this guy doesn't get to hit me because I remembered to use the headbutt effectively In my first playthrough, this bridge to get to the fat official in a moment collapsed, causing me to fall, and I remembered you need to run along the left beam. So it didn't get me this time. <laughs> the fat official did though. <laughs> And somehow I managed to get him to have his back to the wall, making this yet yeah, another grueling fat official fight. <laughs> <laughs> and him falling down the back there wasn't what I wanted because now he's down the bottom with a bunch of other enemies.
So even though the Thief Ring had saved me before, I thought I was pretty comfortable to fight all of these miners, so I wanted the Providential Ring back on in the hopes that one of them might drop Iron Knuckles. These guys with the bags, they always drop something. There's only so many guy, only so many miners with bags in a playthrough of Demon Souls. I wasn't sure if those bags could contain Iron Knuckles. Maybe they can, I don't know. I still don't know. But they generally seem to only drop upgrade mats. But these guys with the fists, I'm sure they probably can drop Iron Knuckles, just like the guys in the tunnels can. So yeah, I wanted the ring, the Providential Ring back on, in the hope that they would drop it for me. Demon Souls has some um, camera issues sometimes obscuring your view, so I wanted to see what options were available in that area there. I would switched it to wall assist, and that enables you to see an outline of your body when close to the walls. I wasn't sure, I've never, ne I'd never changed any of the camera options before, I'd always used chase, but I just wanted to see if the game might be a little easier camera wise with a different setting on. wanted to practice parrying on this lone guy to see whether or not parrying the pickaxe guys was easy and I thought I kind of nailed it but kind of not so I thought I'd try again here and again thought I kind of nailed it but still lost health so kind of not yeah very hard Here I put the thief ring back on. I wasn't sure how many enemies or what type of enemies lay ahead. I wanted to make sure that I had as maximum stealth as possible. And also I really only wanted the providential ring on when I knew I was pretty safe to farm enemies for the potential of dropping 
some iron knuckles if that potential wasn't there or I didn't know what was around me then I, I'd already learnt well and truly to have the thief ring on at all other times Reminded by that fire lizard on the wall, that fire lizards were in the game. I thought, fists only run and fire lizards don't go together, so I'll just avoid them. But then I considered, with it being on its own, this would be the perfect opportunity to test fighting them. So that's what I did here. I expected to catch fire each time I punched it, but because I accidentally kicked it and was already on fire, I didn't get to see whether or not that was true. So I assumed at this point that you do catch fire from hitting a fire lizard with your fists, but, in actual fact, you don't. So long as you don't touch it, you can punch a fire lizard and you won't catch fire. So long as you don't touch it with any other part of your body. avoided fighting all of these fire lizards. I mean there's a lot of enemies in the game that you can avoid fighting if you want to kind of speed run it and avoid some of the more difficult fights. But after getting confidence that I could easily kill fire lizards and also given that my objective of this game isn't to speed run it, it's to try to play as much of the content in a challenging way as possible, I wasn't going to skip these fire lizards. Besides, they give, although they're a small amount of souls, every soul in a run like this counts and also the added benefit of having fought them just there was i learnt that i can hit them and not catch fire so long as i don't touch them with another body part
and it was time to clear my inventory to reduce my weight. So I opened the shortcut to the bonfire and to the second blacksmith but while I was standing here debating whether I would go down I decided I wouldn't because I didn't need anything from that blacksmith. I already had plenty of grass and the only thing I would get from the blacksmith if he was selling grass which I didn't know if he was or not would be grass so I decided not to go down there and to head on further into the world. But as I was running towards this door I looked at my souls and I saw they were almost or approaching close to being able to give me a level up and I thought there may be an item or two from memory near that blacksmith that could be souls and if there are maybe I can get a level up before I continue on to fight the spider boss so I decided I would go back down to where the blacksmith was and have a look but given the length of this video I'll continue that on in part 8 I'll see you there